All right, welcome guys. Uh, welcome to the Classic Cast BlizzCon 2018 Day One Recap. I'm here with Tips Out. I'm here with Stay Safe. How you doing? Asmund Gold is our guest. We also have Annie Fuchsia. She's going to help us with our Q&A a little bit. We don't have our typical setup. We're, we're streaming from the IRL backpack, so it's going to be a little bit different look, a little bit different style. Uh, we're on the road, so uh, we're not going to be quite as active with the chat and whatnot, um, but Annie's going to be helping us out with that. So, uh, First things first, we got we got some good news today. We got some great yes. news. Yes. Yeah, if you're upset good. about Classic... Think about how Diablo players feel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we, we won out today. We, 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 we draw the good straw. Dude, uh, I was not thinking we were going to get a release time, time frame. Right. I yeah. did not think we'd get that. Yeah. So I, what did we get today? We got a release time frame. We didn't get a release date, but we got a release time frame, <clears throat> uh, which, which we'd all hoped for, but nobody really expected, right? Yeah. But we all hoped for it. Uh, we also got the subscription model. They said that it's going to be a link subscription with the retail game, which... I think pretty much anybody who's who's invested in this has been saying that's the best case scenario yep. for, for everybody. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, really, really exciting to hear. Uh, what do you guys think about that? What do you guys think of summer? I think that honestly, like we got the best news today that we could have ever possibly gotten. I the agree. main two things that I thought were important, and also I think this ties into BFA's release schedule <laughs> too, to an extent, and it gives us an idea on when they're planning on releasing the next expansion. So we could probably see that happening faster and probably in the lull of content between BFA and whatever the next expansion is going to be, we're going to see Classic WoW sometime in the summer of 2019. Absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. That is more than anybody had hoped for. Like <clears throat> I myself, I was expecting November for the 15th anniversary of WoW. And I think everybody's feeling great about that. Mm -hmm. And the link subscription is absolutely a great thing, and it's going to create a really good symbiotic relationship between Classic WoW and also the current game. Yeah, I mean, the better retail web does in this in this environment, the better retail web does, the better Classic WoW will do, and vice versa. Yeah. It's yes. good for both games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think one thing, like and we said before, like if we're really lucky, it could be six months, right? And we could be getting that just about. Right, we could be getting just about six months, and you know, if not, maybe twelve months. Right? I, I didn't think it was going to be any later than twelve months. I did not think it was going to be later than November of next year. I thought there was no way. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the biggest things that I, I think we can kind of infer from, let's say, summer, it could be June, it could be May, it could be July, September, whatever, August. It could be August thirty first. It could be August thirty first. I mean, it could be whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But I think that it's it's all but a guarantee that we're going to have some kind of classic testing period, extended testing period, alpha, beta, something like that, within the next three months. And I think that's something that, like... We might see Christmas come early. Yeah, we might see Christmas come we early. We're playing the demo on Christmas. Yeah. Or, or not the demo, the alpha. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So uh, I think that's something to be really excited about, uh, being able to, you know... I'm sure it's going to be a lot like the BFA alpha. They're probably going to address it the same way. It's basically going to be like a hype thing, but, you know, they'll go through and... I've, I've always said that I think that the Hello, testing period guys, is really important today? because there's so many things that they're going to have to go through and, and thoroughly look at, yeah, uh, both is. from a design perspective and just testing it to make sure it's not bugged out. Well, there's, that's I, was a, gonna, go ahead. I was going to say, it's very important. Obviously, there are things that need to be addressed on the demo. I don't think it's the end of the world, but there are issues that need to be taken care of that we've all seen, and I'm sure everyone's worried, and we'll talk about that later in the podcast. Well, well that's, that's a big thing, and I, I want to make one clarification here. A lot of people don't really understand how this game came into being. The current game uh, for the Classic Demo is kind of a, uh, a Frankenstein between the 7.35 client and also the 1.12 client. So that means that a lot of the things that you're seeing on accident, like slash LFR, uh, a lot of the stat values, a lot of those things there, those are purely incidental by the nature of the patch and the skeleton that they're running the game off of. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. In no way, shape, or form, guys, I know there's been a lot of people concerned about what they were seeing, the phasing issues. I think the phasing, we're going to get into that and talk about mm -hmm. it a lot more, but I think that the phasing that we're seeing probably is also... In the sharding, more specifically. Yeah, the sharding, excuse right. me. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's uh, calling it phasing, and it's making yes, us... Yes, yes, <coughs> a very big yeah. difference. Uh, a lot of these things, especially like the stat values and that kind of stuff, uh, movement speed, many of those things I think are probably going to get changed between now and whenever the game comes out, and it's intentional that they are going to change those things because mm -hmm. they are running it off of a newer game. 7.3.5 is obviously the latest version of the Legion client. Mm -hmm. yep. So all of those things 
were in place during the Legion client. So they have to work backwards and remove mm -hmm. things that they've done from the Legion client. One example of that is obviously the difference between stat numbers versus stat percentages. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about like critical strike. I think a lot of you guys remember back whenever uh, we went from Vanilla Wild to Burning Crusade, 14 critical strike was 1% critical strike rating. Right. So that's whenever they moved from percentages over to rating. Uh, they are, I, I, I would bet a million dollars on the fact that they are going to be moving everything back over to percentages. It's just something that they are in the process of doing it. Yeah. And why do you guys think that they're having us do it in Westfall and the Barrens? It's because they don't have any of the other zones ready. Do you know right. why? It's because it's a demo. They're not ready. They're not finished. It's not done. Right. So don't worry. The sky is not falling. Everything is not, you know, just the worst thing ever. Like, it's fine. It's in a process. I wanted to say that and make sure that we cleared the air with that. It's very yeah. important to just kind of be on even ground and be level-headed here. Yeah, I, I think so, too. And uh, kind of speaking to that, like, you know, yes, of course there weren't, like, you know, green items of the Fever Flare or whatever. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't know what actually dropped, right? But there, there weren't items, green items, that were <laughs> dropping uh, secondary stats uh, in, in, in Vanilla Wild like that. Yep. Um, that's not something that, that you would see, especially not... I mean, Dynamic like drops that. again. That's yeah. another holdover from uh, the gear that you receive from mm -hmm. different mobs being tied to the level that you are whenever you, whenever you kill that mob. Right. So again, that's a holdover from the Legion client. That's not actually going to make it into the main game. Yeah. If they do and damn if they don't, I mean, they for a while they were not giving progress updates or not very many water uh, dev talk water coolers. And everyone was very very angry. And now I look at the demo as sort of a progress. They update. finally gave us. Yeah. They, we we can see where they're at. Yeah. And now people are angry again. And, and, and I think I, I think there's certain things like there's a difference between a bug and a design decision, mm -hmm. right? A design uh, decision you're is adopted. oh, and I we're saved, we're saved, we're saved. Yeah. So anyway, so as I was saying, there's a difference between a bug and a design decision. So huge difference. Yeah, like like something that's a bug is something like these items dropping, where it's like I have like. Three something like you know pretty upset about I know, I know for me personally like we've all talked about it before like I, I would I, I personally would rather just like have zero sharding and just like let them to the wolves and if it crashes it crashes because I mean that's how like we did that back then like well, that, that's a huge conversation it, it's a, it's a big I, conversation. I think that it is and also yeah. I want to draw a distinction between a lot of people who have been using phasing and sharding interchangeably mm -hmm. uh, I think basically the difference really is that the player triggers phasing and sharding triggers on its own based off of the amount of people that are around the player so for an example phasing is you're halfway done with the quest line and you've saved the city and the city is no longer burning whereas in the beginning it was burning that is phasing sharding is where everybody is in the burning city and you only see certain players because right. you're in a different shard different part and of the that's, line yeah that's phase, yeah exactly uh phasing is usually used to tell stories and make sure that they're organic and people have the world evolving around them. Sharding is done pretty much purely for server stability and also for player uh, feel, which also, like, Ward did make a huge post about this because mm -hmm. phasing was obviously the first... Or, sorry, sharding. I'm, just I'm doing it too, <laughs> so it's okay. Um, War made a huge post about this today, and I think a lot of people are picking that apart. Um, Andy, we do you want to go ahead yeah. and uh, go through that? Yeah, and this was made by over a few hours ago. Yeah, yeah, this was posted about four hours ago. And he says, as you've noticed, the classic demo does have realm sharding. This is to let as many people as possible experience it without technical issues such as server capacity or spawn density getting in the way. Longer term, we know how crucial it is to the classic experience for you to see your friends when you walk into Stormwind or when you're helping them on a quest you've already completed. And there should only ever be one Kazakh on a realm, no matter how many people are waiting for him to spawn. Mm -hmm. We're still looking at how we can best deliver an authentic classic experience at launch and in the weeks and months to follow, both in terms of gameplay and community. Mm -hmm. You won't see phasing, which is tied to specific quests that don't exist in classic, or cross-realm zones, which combine multiple realms together in classic. However, realm sharding is one of the best tools we have to keep realms stable when hundreds of people are swarming the same initial few zones and killing the same few mobs, like they will be at the launch of classic. 
So one thing that we want to break down here is that Laura did not say that they will or they will not have phasing. He did not said sharding is a very useful tool, and I think that's very important. Laura is a very established and seasoned community manager, and I think that's at true. this point, especially after all the Azerite debacles that we've had, <laughs> I think he's choosing his words very carefully. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's very important to keep that in mind. Yeah. I think, you know, to your point, kind of breaking it down, uh, he, he goes through and he talks about, he, he basically breaks up the paragraphs into like um, kind of the thought process behind sharding and like, you know, where it's good, where it's bad, philosophy. what they've done with the philosophy, yeah, yeah basically. Um, so he talks about how he specifically says, explicitly says, that they understand how big, uh, how, how big the sense of community is, how, uh, how the players obviously do not want sharding. And, and that's something that they understand. So whenever, whenever I got off my stream, Right, I, I just got the stream uh, at BlizzCon. Literally, the first thing I did, the first thing I did, I got off. I went and I talked to a couple Blizzard employees, and I asked them, and I was like, "Hey, look, this is not good." Like, I just told them straight up, like, I, "I'm, you know, I'm, I'm always going to be honest with you guys. I'm like, I'm, I'm, that's just who I am, right?" So, I don't think this is good. Uh, are you guys, you know, what, like, what do you, do you guys know? Do you guys, do you guys hear what people? The are sharding saying? specifically. The sharding specifically, yep. yeah. The sharding yep. is not good, and they said, yeah, you know, we we hear we hear what people are saying. Like they're big on feedback, and they specifically said this in the first and second dev water coolers. Oh yeah. They said they are actually looking at feedback, right? Sometimes people feel like they're just you know shouting into a, you know nothingness, but they are hearing the feedback. They are saying that people do not want sharding. I, you know, I personally, I went, I was like, hey, showing is bad, we can't do this. But um, they were like, we, we hear the feedback, and our goal is to make the most authentic, classic WoW experience as we possibly can. So, you know, while they didn't say anything specifically, to me, I, I, I can infer from that that they're actively looking for a solution. Is sharding oh, yeah. authentic vanilla WoW experience? No. No. no not so, not. I, I think that one thing that we can look at is that a lot of the things that Blizzard has done so far to classic has all been in the vein of preserving the game in its original state right and you know you can uh, draw straws with like you know having it come out of 1.12 and, mm -hmm. and a few other things like the, uh, the graphical updates etc but in terms of the core gameplay and the philosophy i do really feel like they've got their finger on the pulse of what the community wants and what the community feels is true to classic absolutely and specifically with this post i look at it it's broken down into three separate parts the first part is explicitly regarding the demo. Um, it's funny, we kind of talked about damn if they do, damn if they don't. Imagine if they didn't have sharding for the demo, and the demo was crashing 24-7, and people were complaining, oh my god, I paid $50 for a game that doesn't even Yeah, they're, they're screwed. Yeah. They're screwed. Yeah. 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 At the end of the day, yeah. it's a demo, they had 20 servers, they're not going to allocate the resources to this, they went to an actual launched game. So obviously they're going to take, you know, whatever shortcuts, I don't even I don't think they're a shortcut, but whatever measures they can, to prevent server instability for a demo. Yep. Um, and that goes beyond just the sharding. I mean, so many things that happen today, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. The second part is the actual sharding itself. And uh, again, I do think Lord did not officially confirm that they would do sharding in the first place, so maybe it was blown out of control a little bit. Um, but I think the most important part is the third part, and that is the viable alternatives. As when you just said, sharding was not conducive to the classic experience, it wasn't part of vanilla. The only issue I see is that uh, there, what is the alternative, right? What is the alternative? I mean, we've seen servers that have implemented dynamic respawns and have been able to hold up a server population cap of like 14,000 plus. Um, but technically dynamic spawns are not vanilla either. It's so a change. It's a change. So it seems like whichever direction they take, ultimately it will not be a vanilla experience, but obviously we have to find out which alternative is most conducive, most faithful to vanilla as close as possible and doesn't disrupt the overall player experience. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at the demo, I think this is the healthiest way to look at it. This is a progress update, and they're looking for feedback. People, right. people have been begging for something like this. I think this is a very good thing. Um, if there are problems, we will, we will do our best to, to communicate those problems to them. I think you guys should talk about them on the forums and make it whatever you guys can do. And uh, I, I know for a fact that they're listening. Yeah, and, and, and that's one more thing to, to make sure to, I, I want to emphasize this, right? Uh, let's be honest, historically the classic community has been, I think, wrongfully uh, kind of had placed on them this, like, this, this, this oh, these guys are, are they're, they're aggressive, they're this, they're that, they're trying to attack people, which is not the case, right? You may have had a few bad apples here and there, but what happens is whenever you have a good message 
and no, not me, no. But whenever you have a good message, you have something that you want to say, you want to say, hey, we don't want sharding, right? You don't go say, F this guy, F that guy. You say, hey, this is, this is, something, this is something that we don't want because of this. This is the reason why. And, and you try and convey it in, in a reasonable manner so that, that the message doesn't get lost in translation. You don't want to take away from the message by adding in like well, the extracurricular well, stuff. Well, we had this conversation a little bit ago, mm -hmm. and um, what would actually be the true vanilla WoW experience of whenever the game comes out, crash all of the servers <laughs> crashing. A lot of a lot and of one day. Uh, I yeah. I'll, I'll be honest, and, and this also goes into the conversation that I would have about the gates of AQ. I hope that they do the gates of AQ opening event, as I'm sure everybody else does. And would I rather sharding? I want those servers to crash. Exactly. It, I want if <laughs> if it has to crash, then that's what has to happen. I would rather have them crash than have sharding. Absolutely. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Crashing is underrated, might... dude. Yeah, it's yeah, underrated. I know that's that's awesome. You it get really free is. game time. I love it, dude. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have so many one-day credits on my account. I, I can show you guys. I, know, I can I show you guys. Yeah. I have so many one-day credits yeah. on my account. But like, do you think Blizzard as a company would want to have a game that crashes? Well, well if there's an opportunity they, to convey to them, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> they just did it two months ago. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is, I mean, remember Diablo 3? I mean, that was yeah. obviously oh, bad. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the thing is that, yes, obviously the launch, I think Classic WoW is going to be the one of the most anticipated games in probably uh, gaming history, I mean, oh, really. Yeah. I mean, it's, like, WoW, like, defined an entire generation. It defined an entire genre. Like, it, it's one of the mass, most massive games in the entire world. It's, like, one of the only games that's, like, currently, like, being played in this current, that's in, like, the video game Hall of Fame. It, it's a very, very well-known game. Hundreds, of probably, at this point, of millions of people have played it and more have heard about it. The first day, if none of the servers go down, uh, yeah, none of the servers I'll be go upset, down, honestly. I'll say it. If none of the servers go down, I'll buy every storm out in the game. <laughs> okay? Yeah, I, I don't think... Uh, I, I just think trying to... Wait, didn't you say that for if Classic was made? Well, we're moving the goalposts. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, my, my, what I'm trying to say is, um, basically, if... They're trying to put in all this extra stuff to kind of prevent the servers from crashing. I understand this 2018 Blizzard, like, yeah, for the polish on I don't care. I honestly just don't care. Like, uh, I, I get that you know you, you're paying for this, and, and they want to have a good look, and everything works, and it's all fine and dandy. But like, I, like, I, I don't want to have something in the game that takes away from the game experience, right? Like, if I'm not playing the game, guess what? It's a vanilla experience. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like, it is what it is. Yeah. And, and uh, okay, let's say worst case scenario. Let's say worst case scenario. They put sharding in at launch to kind of for a week or something like that. Yeah, I was thinking the same. Maybe realistically, that would be the best way to well, have I, a softer start. I'm I'm hoping that they find another solution, right? Yeah. But let's say let's say even if they do something like that, right? Even if they do something like that, I don't like that. But <laughs> at what point does it stop? Where do they cut it off? Like, it, it, how how calculated is yeah. it going to be? You know, I don't know. everyone yeah. has these very and we talked about this on the last podcast, I think, or at some point, everyone has these very fond memories of Vanilla WoW. That were sort of bugs and inconveniences, you know, the the Zulgarub, you know, the plague thing, and there's all sorts of events like this. I think a sort of a rocky, zero sharding, zero phasing classic WoW launch, a couple months down the road would be a you, you think, it would be a on. memorable classic WoW event. Right, exactly. Like it, it would be an event of the game. Right. Absolutely. Well, I think even with sharding, honestly, service will probably still crash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably will. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, why even, yeah, why even try? Like, it's still going to crash. Again, I think... Yeah, sorry. Go, go ahead, sorry. I'm, well, I'm just leaving. No, no problem. I think the biggest thing for Blizzard right now um, is to explore alternatives. Like, the most important thing. We have the Q&A tomorrow, and obviously we'll get more clarification on this post today and a lot of other things. But explore a lot of our alternatives because... Especially in the classic community, you know, the sharding is like it's like a bad word. Like it's the S it's, word. It's, it's, not it's blasphemy. You yeah, know, like not, no. of all the things to change. I mean, I'd rather ha them have LFR than sharding. You know, to be honest, it ruins the immersion. It, ru it ruins the immersion. Like imagine walking the Iron Forge, your friend's right there, but you can't see him. Like destroys the game. Um, I definitely think exploring the alternatives. I mean, and, and again, we've seen other alternatives work. Lower the server caps if you have to to Blizz like numbers. Dynamic spawns if you need them. Increase server quantity, and yeah, that might be more expensive. You might have to worry about merges down the line. But if I were to ask everybody right now in chat, what would you prefer, sharding or server merges? You know, six months from now, twelve months from now. I mean, what would the answer be? I think I think we all server merges. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I'd rather yeah. have that. Yeah. 
Just let me keep my name. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. I don't want to lose my name. <laughs> like, I'm, very, I'm very protective of my name. There was actually a really good post today on the forums. I've seen this idea thrown around before, but uh, credit to the guy who posted I can't remember his name. Uh, the idea of creating kind of cl- predefined server clusters. Like I think the example he gave was Illidan 1, Illidan 2, Illidan 3, Illidan 4. So players rolling on those servers in advance have some idea that, okay, these servers are kind of merged in the sense that they're um, going to be merged. They're going they to be merged. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you can save your that name. That was a great game. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> it's still no, going. Not, not, okay, is it still going? Uh, is it still yeah. going? Okay, so, so if a game is not good, right? If a game is not good, if a game is bad, it doesn't mean every idea in the game was bad. I was just joking, right? Mm-hmm. It just means more, more ideas are bad than not. It is fantastic. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing it right now, actually. Uh, it was Meta Panda, Sorry. by the way. It looks like who wrote that post. Yeah. But yeah, the idea of you can reserve your name on any one of those servers, but they share a naming database, and if, God forbid, down the line, the servers depopulate, you just merge them all together, and then that's pretty much that. How do you feel about server population? I mean, personally, I prefer Blizz-like, uh, 2,500 to 3,000, something along those lines, just preserve the community. Um, obviously, we've played on much larger servers before. Um, it's a different experience, but I think when it comes to issues like sharding in particular, server community, at the end of the day, asking for more population, I feel, would kind of be contradictory to the no changes thing. So, Yeah, I mean, like... And I've said this before, right? And it's like you gotta you gotta be able to have this discussion, right? Mm-hmm. Do you say no changes because no changes, or do you say no changes because of reason? Um, That's and, the thing. Then it opens up the floodgates. That's well, what I'm scared well, of, you know. I mean, sure. Like we can't be scared of opening up the floodgates. Like if you if I think if you believe this, you gotta you gotta come out and say like, hey, look, this is why I believe this, and you gotta back it up. Yeah. Right? I, well, I, what's more important than having just a dogma is being able to articulate why you yes. feel the way you feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like it's like I like I don't want to have like extra population or whatever because the original world was not designed to have uh, however many people running through without dynamic response, without sharding, uh, you know, without whatever. Versus right? just no changes. Versus right. just no changes. Yeah. And, and that's that's yeah. from the beginning I've, I've always kind of kind of thought that and, yeah. uh, and I, think, I think we all need to do that. That's much more valuable, much more effective when trying to make a point mm-hmm. or bring people to your side or communicate with Blizzard and give feedback. It's a much more nuanced position yeah. to have but it's yeah. also a lot more difficult to articulate to people on a more wholesale level. Mm-hmm. And also one thing that's interesting about that is uh, I think we should probably talk about progressive itemization because in that in that circumstance changes is no changes and no changes is changes right so recently tips has made a really good video about progressive itemization and do you want to kind of go through some of the different concerns that you had with that and uh, how it would kind of change the progression and like you know the different contexts of the game absolutely so in vanilla wow back in the day um, item items were not necessarily static over time certain items that existed at the start of the game right at launch had their stats changed some experienced total overhauls And some items were added later on into the game on the loot tables of pre-existing bosses. So for example, in Stratholme, Stratholme was available in the game at launch, but 12 months later, all of a sudden, you know, I think Cannon Master Willie is dropping um, Dianus Pearl Necklace? Yes. Yes, Dianus Pearl Necklace. So, uh, and that's a very, very good neck. Um, You compared it it to the necklace from Ragnaros. Exactly, the Fire Lord. Um, And it's, it doesn't, I said invalidates, it's, it's very competitive with it. Fire Lord is a little bit better but it definitely decreases the desire to go into Molten Core and try to farm that neck piece. And essentially what it does, it skews progression entirely. You have items that are dropping from dungeons that are essentially better than some things that drop all the way through to AQ, to Naxxramas sometimes. Uh, PvP gear especially gets updated later on in vanilla to have better stats. The PvP uh, one-handed weapons for warriors, the rank 14 weapons, are pretty much BIS all the way through to Nax. Uh, you have a lot of situations where items that get updated later invalidate the content that comes with the release of the game. And basically what some servers like Nost, Rip have done in the past is they've kind of followed that chain or partially followed that chain of progression where the items on launch are as they were back in vanilla when they launched and over time they include the new items into the game the same way that Blizzard did back in the day, so as to not invalidate the previous content. And is that yeah. kind of how you'd like to see Blizzard implemented in Classic? Absolutely. If Blizzard came out today and said, we're doing NOST, uh, but with Blizzard support, low ping, high uptime, um, you know, local regional servers, and maybe some small discrepancies here and there, I'd, I'd sign up. So, I, well, so real ahead. quick, NOST screwed up the progressivization. Like pretty hard. I think almost everybody does because almost it's so does. hard to yeah. figure it out. Is. It's I mean, difficult. Who it's knows difficult. even if Blizzard yeah. has the uh, information? Right, and, and I think with, with progressive itemization, I, I think this is something that 
is it, it's not it's it's not really explained in depth enough, right? There's different parts to progressive itemization. There's uh, when items are released, when items were taken out of the game, when item stats were changed. There's different parts to it, right? It's it's not simply uh, an item getting buffed or nerfed or whatever throughout the course of the game. There's whenever items are added. We've we've talked about titanic leggings before. Um, some no, items were changed because of spell schools. There were some wands that had physical damage on them. They were changed later on to have like magical damage on them, stuff like that too. So, so uh, I mean, we, we know we know the Titanic leg plates thing. I'll, I'll go ahead mm -hmm. and go into it. So, what the Titanic leggings are? Uh, they're plate leggings. Mm -hmm. Fifty-five blacksmithing recipe. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, Epic world drop. Boe. Right. So, what happens is these are added in patch one point ten, and these are so good that. They're basically the best in slot plate DPS pants. They got two crit, a hit, and, and about 30 strength. Um, and they're not replaced by anything other than uh, the, the leg plates out of Nax that I, I believe are off of Hygen, uh, or leg plates. If you want to go with like a leather, if you're going to wear leather and go with like an agility build, trying to stack crit or whatever, um, the Apocalypse leggings off of Four Horsemen. So there's two Nax items that are better. So if this item is in the game, right, so we're talking about item release when it comes to progressive itemization, 1.10 patch. This was the dungeon set two patch, uh, the, the tier 0 0.5. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about this, this is an item that can't be in from the beginning of the game. If you have it in from the beginning of the game, then all of a sudden you have your this until the end of the game available to players right off the bat. And it changes the meta. It changes the meta, it changes the difficulty of the raids because players are gonna have better gear earlier on. So that side of progressive itemization, talking about item release, is different than updating the stats and whatnot, right? So kind of using Nostalrius as an example. Nostalrius screwed up the Tier 2 itemization. So the Tier 2, whenever the Tier 2 was released, uh, let's take the Paladin gear, for example. The Paladin gear had spell power stats on it uh, in the 1.6 patch. So 1.6, Blackwing Lair comes out. Tier 2 is not introduced, but reintroduced into the game, and I'll get into that later. But Tier 2 is reintroduced into the game with... Healing stats. It's like a PvP healing set in retail vanilla, but on Nostalrius, it had the 1.9 stats. So this is a case of the other side of progressive monetization, where whenever items get changed or buffed or whatever. So there's that. Everybody seems to have been really, really happy with Nost, yet there there were like big, big quote glaring issues. Well, now, like people, that that's something that people would consider a glaring issue now, but. That's something that was not really the case there. I think that's not as bad. I personally want to see it updated in 1.9, or what would be I do too. Exactly. So, so, go ahead. well, I, I, I'm, I personally want to see that, but I don't think it's as big of a deal of like having the item, like like the leg plates, the Titanic leggings, come out from the beginning of the game. You see what I'm saying? So another thing, one more thing, one more part to progressive itemization. The tier two gear was available in MC until I think the 1.3 patch, and in 1.4 they removed it. So, not only was it available, and again, let's use Paladins for example. You still get the legs from Rag. You still get the legs from Rags, and you still get the head from Rag. Oh, that's true. Should but, the tier 2 gear be available in Molten Core, is that what you're saying? So, I'm saying yeah. not. Yeah, of course not. Yeah. yeah. And now, as a Paladin, I would love that, because not only was the tier 2 gear available early on, it was a, it was a straight up ret set. Like, they had a chance on, chance on crit, there was like a 20% chance that whenever you crit, you get like a 300 holy damage proc. Like, it was insane. It was an insane Red Paladin set. But that's the other side of progressive itemization, right? Where Are we going to do true progressive itemization where the judgment gear is there, where you have all these red stats from 1.2, 1.3, and then all of a sudden you have your full judgment set before the 1.6 patch runner BWL comes out, hmm. right? And now we're talking about all this uh, in terms of patch-by-patch patch progressive content release. You know, who knows if they're going to do phase content release, which, which is a different thing. Like, you know, let, let's, we'll talk about that later. But progressive organization has so many different parts to it that uh, it's not one thing. And I think we talk about progressive organization as one thing well, no, way too much. Not, yeah. it's, well, it's not one especially thing. Especially with PvP gear, it's a whole different there's, situation. Yeah, there's a yeah. huge spectrum. And I, I, I've always actually been of the perspective until I saw Tip's video that I didn't really care about progressive itemization. And I thought it was just like something that was kind of irrelevant that people that were just like super purists were concerned about. But then whenever Tips made so many comparisons with like the Diana's Pearl necklace and also the Titanic light plates, and I think there was a helmet there too that mm -hmm. wasn't even replaced by Nefarian gear that was a blue item. Yes. Like these things right here are basically something that mirrors what we see right now in the current game. What state of affairs. If people went into Molten 
core, or they went into BWL, and they ended up not replacing the gear that they got out of these very difficult raids, especially getting 40 people together all the same time. Yeah, just... No, it's only on Neff. Saved, 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 saved. Yeah, yeah, it's just, just going to go back and forth. It should be fine. Yeah. Uh, to me, like, I feel like that's obviously very bad for the game. And then also, like, the Titanic Lake Plates example, uh, what happens with that is that, let's say you're able to get Titanic Lake Plates, and there are six pieces that you can get from the Field Marshal set. Well, now there's only really five. So you just diminish the amount of power growth that a player can have through doing the Field Marshal grind by, like, what, 15 or 12 percent or something like that. And, I mean, obviously Grand Marshal is more, but, you know, most people probably aren't going to be able to get to there. And the more things that you take away, the more reasons people have to not uh, kind of pursue content. And I think that there should always be a direction of pursuing higher and more challenging content. And the issue with these pieces of gear is they function in the same way that current WoW's catch-up gear works, is that it ends up removing content from the game and not adding it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah right. I agree 100%. Um, that's that's a big one. Like, I think if you ask a lot of people, like, it impacts so many elements of the game, how to incentivize content, the progression curve at the end game, the difficulty of the raids, that's definitely a big one. That's that's definitely one we, we hope to talk about a lot tomorrow with, with the mm -hmm. class. They have to do it. Yeah, uh, it it's, it's really bad if they don't. It is very bad. Yeah, that's that's something I 100% I expect to hear This about. is such a big project, man. Like, they're, they're retrofitting 112 off of 7.3.5, and worrying about 1.1 itemization. Yeah. This is such an enormous project, and they have to think about all this stuff very, in a very, very, very detailed lens. Do we know what the panel is going to talk about tomorrow? They, they basically just said it's a classic panel. That's it. Classic yeah, panel. That's, that's basically it. And, and real quick, guys, because um, we don't have our normal setup or whatever, uh, I asked Andy to come help us out to kind of do Q and A and stuff here in a little bit. Uh, so again, tweet questions at us. That's going to be the best way for us to, to keep up with it when I'm not at my computer doing my stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, so just use the hashtag ClassicCast mm -hmm. and I yeah. will read them and... Uh, Try to add also Annie Fuchsia too. Yeah, uh, if you, if you yeah, have you, yeah, you can tag me yeah, to make it easier. Just so it'll make it easier for us to be able to find these things. Mm -hmm. what, do you, uh, what do you guys think about the Collector's Edition? I think it'd be cool. I mean, I, I don't really... Do you think that there should be any sort of rewards to it? Like, so what if they had a collector's edition, and the rewards from the collector's edition mirrored the rewards in, from the collector's like, edition? All like the Diablo cut. Like like I, I think they should yeah. be different. You really think they should be different? I think they should be different. I, the, the reason why I think okay. it should be different is, to me, somebody who has a collector's edition, and, and you and Andy are, are retail wow, like, you, you guys you guys are collectors, right? Yes, you guys are. You do, you do trans you do your mm -hmm. achievements and stuff like that. Uh, I'm, I'm personally not so big on that, but like when you guys see somebody and they have their, their Diablo pad or, or whatever, it's like, what the frick? Like that's something so like, it's like sacred. Almost. Oh yeah, yeah, we saw it the other day, it was crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So like, and even I'm like that, you know, as somebody who's not super into that. Um, I think they should leave that the way it is. If they want to do a collector's edition, I think that's cool, that's fine. Uh, but I think they should they just have it be something else. I agree. I would prefer nothing in game. Uh, maybe something like a physical copy of like you know the old. What did they used to give you? The old strategy guide, or what did they give you? The box? Brady game strategy guide. I still have mine. Yep. Yeah, yep. something like that. Uh, something more physical. I think that would also be like a little bit more retro, kind of going back to the old classic theme. You know, bringing it back. But uh, did, the, did the classic collector's edition not exist at the time? I mean, don't you think some people might have liked to have those pets from back then? I think so, but I think you could say the same thing about like a lot of other things, you know, bringing back a lot of other stuff that people find very exclusive today. Um, I don't know, I just, again, like you said, it's sacred, like seeing the Diablo pets, stuff like that, that like Corrupted Ashbringer even, for example, like stuff like that that's just no longer attainable, kind of preserve its status. Um, yeah. I'm going to disagree. I actually think, I actually think those initial, those initial collected edition rewards are perfect for this. Yeah. And as, as, as long as they don't carry over to your retail account. Yeah, this yeah. is a conversation we have all the time on my stream and probably with you guys too. Should they let Transmog go back and forth? Absolutely not. Hell no, no, dude. Oh, you get corrupted <laughs> Ashmere and Glasser. Guys, you're just you're asking that because you want to get get the items, man. Like, it's not gonna, they're not going to do that. You're not going to get a corrupted Ashbringer, it, by the way. Yeah, just, you well, know, the thing like, is, it's, it's like, what, you're going to have some hunter get the corrupted yeah. Ashbringer because he wants it on his main well, board? Here, here's yeah. the and thing. Here's the thing. If, yeah. if you're someone that's concerned about that and asking that question, 
You're not the you're not the guy who's ever going to get a corrupted action. Exactly. Like, you're, exactly. Not, right. you're not you're not gonna be in the situation. But things easier like chromatic sword, for example, that drops off of that basket. That was chromatic sword was added back into the game. It's back in. Oh, it's back uh, in. It's back in. Oh. But there are other items. Other so items. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there's there's, yeah, there's a dwarf hunter on Kel'Thuzad. They got a corrupted ash spring. I was in a I was doing Nax in Burning Crusade at the end of Burning Crusade. I was doing Nax <laughs> uh, farm runs, and a, and a hunter got the corrupted ash in the raid. I was in, and it just drove me nuts, dude. I lost the roll to a paladin, man. I was mad. Well, like, good, it's a paladin weapon, mm-hmm. of course. Right, probably, baby. Man, dude, I was so upset about that. That was the last item I didn't ninja loot. I was, <laughs> was, yeah, that's a mistake I didn't have to learn twice. I don't know, man. So, like, obviously that kind of stuff is kind of common sense. I, I feel like any of those concerns are really kind of whatever. But I feel like if they're going to bring back Classic WoW, I think they should bring back the original Collector's Edition pets in the same way that the Prestige is preserved with, like, Corrupted Ashbringer. Like, if you see somebody on live servers with Corrupted Ashbringer now versus Classic whenever the Axe is out, I feel like there's still going to be that level of prestige there. Right. Now, yeah. OG. Wait, wait, think about, there were a couple TCG items. What do you think about those? Nope. They were not. Uh, TCG was added in Burning Crusade. I thought there were a couple things in 1.12. Is that not true? I really don't think so. I, 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 I don't know enough about TCG. Okay. I really think that I will was default added to you. Percent. Okay, yeah, you probably know more than I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I, I think. I think with all that stuff, I, I don't know. It, it's not. To me, that collector's edition stuff is not that big of a deal for me to, like, spurg out about it. Whatever they do. If they want to add new rewards, if they want to do the same rewards, um, I've never really thought that pets like I'm really I just back don't, in the I don't care I about thought it was prestigious. Yeah, like even like Matt, like I think it's cool now. I don't I did not think it was cool then. I, I'm still kind of like like I But specifically with the vanilla collector's edition stuff. Like if I see some yeah, yeah, like, stuff. Dude, you've yeah. been playing this game since then? Like that that's what's crazy about it. Not the item. It's yeah. the fact that you know that they've been playing since the beginning and they have something. Yeah. But like I just like don't really care for cosmetic stuff. Like personally. Like I'm just kinda like Whatever, yeah. like, like uh, you know, like I said, I'm not a big collector. I don't do transmog that much. I don't, I don't, I freaking seventy mounts in retail. Yeah, like I, yeah, I, I, I just, dude. yeah, it's almost all of them. Yeah, it's almost all. Uh, it's almost <laughs> no. The only mount, like, the, the, there's very, very few times in retail where I've got, like, I got a Blizzard Bear. I have a BlizzCon 2008 BlizzCon Blizzard Bear, and that's like the coolest thing. Yeah. Ever. But like other than that, like, I have that. I got a Baron Death Charger. Um, that's those are the only two mounts that I can think of that I was like, this is cool. Baron's uh, I, I, CG Tiger. Yeah. I do want to bring it back yeah, to like what we saw today, and let's talk about what yeah, we saw let's today. Yeah, real back. Yeah. Um, how optimistic are you guys that classic WoW will be will be vanilla WoW? Um, after what we've seen today. So comparing, comparing. Okay, so this is what we got to look at, right? Are we going to compare it to vanilla WoW, and or are we going to compare it to how close is the private server to vanilla WoW? Vanilla, right? Are they are they going to make changes that will fundamentally change what the vanilla WoW gameplay experience was? Not intentionally. I don't. I think honestly, based on everything they've told us so far, if you go back to every single post, they've made themselves like a thousand percent clear. They're trying to preserve the authentic vanilla experience. They're doing they, what they, they have can. Said that. Yeah, they're yeah. doing what they can to get there. The issue is, as this fan pointed out, some things are a lot more complicated than we might think. Mm-hmm. And the other issue is downporting the game from the seven three five client. As we've seen on the demo, some things have slipped through the cracks. Possibly some things they just you know might not have gone to yet, but. I would totally expect once the alpha comes out, even yeah. in the beta, things are slipping through the cracks. Somebody finds out, oh my god, you know, there's this little small thing, you know, the pet pathing is Legion pet pathing, it should be, you know, vanilla pet pathing. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, the onus is gonna be on us to report those issues and Blizzard hopefully retroactively, you know, fixes all those yeah. problems. Yeah. I um, mean we've been, we've been asking for status updates for a very long time. Yeah. They gave us one and we can play it and we can give feedback. Mm-hmm. I'm very, very happy with this. Of course, there are problems, but this is this is a dream situation what we have right now. I'm very, very happy with with today. So, so here's the thing, and uh, kind of bringing both of your guys' points together, we got two water cooler updates, right? And and so far, everything that they have said, it turns out, yeah, they, they, it all sounds good, right? It all sounds good. Uh, the concern is some of the things that, that people have seen in the demo, but I don't think, like I said, is it is it. <laughs> A, a design thing or is it a bug, right? Like the crit thing, the, the secondary stats, that's a yeah. bug, right? That's something I wouldn't even... Like, bring it up. Hey, this is happening, right? Oh, okay, thanks. We figured it out. We'll fix it, right? right? Boom. Problem solved. Personal good thing. Too. Personal good thing. Yeah, boom. Problem solved, right? Like, st- stuff like that. Problem solved. Um, those things are bugs, but whenever it comes to design type stuff, uh, that's where, you know, hey, we don't like sharding and this is why. Um, they're, they're certainly looking at feedback. I think that... Uh, I think that there's some things in the demo that we just flat out can't see, right? 
and they might have not even touched. I'm, I'm, let, let's talk a little bit about the sound, sandbox stuff, right? Because because we got some screenshots and um, you know pe people sent us some screenshots. We made some videos and talked about them before. Um, in the sandbox stuff, one of the things that was looked at is like you know Judgment Helm, you know Tier Two, Tier Two Paladin Helm. Oh, it was like the 1.9 stats, right? If they just have a demo and the sandbox is just on the demo client for 15 to 19, then that's something that they may have not even looked at yet. Exactly. You know, like who cares? Like they, they could just be saying, well, they're not thinking about the judgment <clears throat> helm. They're not thinking about the judgment helm. They're they're not thinking about any of that. They're thinking about like, hey, let's get this 15 to 19 thing out so we can push something out to them and kind of start to get feedback. Mm -hmm. Start to open that line of communication with the player base. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we need to take advantage of that. Like we, we need to we need to we they're trying to they're trying to say hey here, here give us some feedback. So like we need to just do it the right way. That's the most important thing. Otherwise you have this freaking like you don't want this constructive articulate, you wanna, well formatted. Feedback. Yes, exactly. Because then you like uh, if you go wild yeah. and you act like a crazy person, they're gonna treat you like a crazy person. And you know what you do to crazy people? You do just enough to make sure they don't go off the deep end, and then you ignore them. So yeah. that's what's going to happen if you act like a jackass, is you're going to be treated like a jackass. And obviously, like at this point, I think that people need to come together and make sure that the things that we see on the demo, right, the, you know, the sharding, the uh, item stuff, we give feedback and we say this isn't how it was, and we want it to be back the same way as that it was. And, and I, I think that obviously... Everything that we've seen so far, it seems like Blizzard is responding to our feedback. And by the way, you were right. About the release date? October 2006. No. Oh. And Oh, the TG items. Yes. I was right. You were. About TG items. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. October, October 1.12. Right. Yeah. I thought so. Okay, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't remember that at all. So, um... <clears throat> Speaking of technical things, since you guys have played a lot, and uh, I'm not sure how it was on private servers, but what about... Things like getting stuck while looting, like loot bug and things, things like that. Those, Since it's coming yeah. from the Legion client, that would probably not be there, right? Those yeah. are flavor bugs, yeah. right? And, yeah. yeah, and those things will probably not be there. They're not and how do you guys feel about that? Uh, like, I mean, I wish it was there because it's just like flavor bug, like you said. Like, yeah. Yeah, like moonwalking. Moonwalking, I couldn't. Somebody said you found out how to moonwalk in the. No, some guy DC'd while we were dueling. It looked like he was uh, moonwalking. Yeah, no, no, no. I was trying to moonwalk. Like, it, it's just, I don't know. Are you guys really that torn up? Like, it's wall just, jumping? It's just like, I really don't dude, care it's, that it's, much. Like, yeah. It's like I don't have salt on my food. Like, that's, that's yeah. how I feel. Yeah, it's okay. like, like my, my food doesn't have okay. salt on it. That's, how, this, that's it. Like, I, just, I wish I had more salt. I that's think wall jumping is a little bit more of like a core thing of vanilla than moonwalking, yeah. right? It was a great way to kill time. It is. really was. And people trying to get up to the top on top of the Iron Forge Bank and then like the right pot pillars like yeah that was cool and obviously it's not something that like really makes the game better and in a lot of ways it kind of makes the game worse it makes the game show its flaws of course but also like we want the game for what it is and if it's possible for Blizzard to add in some of those things that add flavor that don't necessarily ruin the game uh, I think that's absolutely something that they should do and in terms of like things that were bugs, I think there are a lot of things that were um, borderline bugs. And I think the best example of this is Cthune pre-nerf. Mm -hmm. How okay. do you guys feel about Cthune pre-nerf? Should it be released pre-nerf or pre post-nerf? Pre-nerf, absolutely, absolutely. And I think uh, a lot of the theory crafters out there might suggest it too. Apparently, so back in Vanilla, obviously, there wasn't the same level of theory crafting, sophistication, yeah. knowledge of itemization that we have today. Just, just for fun, just for fun. But, but so much of that stuff goes off of like private server stuff, which but, like things just like don't work. Well, like, so if it doesn't work, they can always you know nerf it. But you just, just for fun, you throw it out there, see how people do. You know, yeah, I mean, I, I, to me, like, I, I mean, whatever, right? But like, mm -hmm. wasn't part of the problem with Cthulhu is sometimes there was like a chance that a tentacle would spawn in the wall and then you just wipe. I didn't, I, I, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. That's, that's what I, I, I didn't do it. But yeah. that's that's what I heard. Like, they could, a tentacle could spawn in the wall and then you can't kill it and you wipe. I will say, I have a friend who progressed on Cthulhu uh, pre-nerf, and he says, given a couple weeks, he really feels like he could have done it. Yeah. But, but who knows? You know, this is 15 years yeah. hindsight. You, know, who knows? you also have 10 years of uh, theory crafting. Right. I feel like right. if they brought out Cthulhu, people, someone, <coughs> some guild would kill it. And yeah. um, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I didn't do it back then either. So I don't know. But don't, yeah. it seems like something that they should at least try to see what happens. And I think there's a lot of these other events, right, that happened in Vanilla Well that were like these iconic events. I think the most, one of the ones that 
everybody knows about, that there were studies done about it, was the blood plague. That was a, a debuff that you were able to get in, I believe, ZG, and, right. and um, it was used to test about how people would respond to some sort of like a disease outbreak. And I think a lesser known example, but also a very high profile example, is the uh, talisman of binding shark, mm -hmm. which was a legendary necklace that was able to drop yeah. from yeah. Gar. And it dropped for one guy, his name was, uh, was Noctis. Noctis, Noctis from uh, Guild Nerfed. And Noctis from Nerfed. And Noctis from Nerfed. And uh, it was this weird necklace that actually had an effect, didn't it? It was, yeah, it was Lightning Shield from Shamans. It was the same thing. Really? The Lightning Shield? Okay. Yeah. Um, how do you guys, where, where, where do you guys stand on that kind of stuff? That'd be awesome. I, I think it'd be, I think it, it, look, it, it's something that it would be cool if they had one person that could get it, yeah, but yeah. at the same time, like, whatever. What do you think about the blood plague? Do you think that should happen? No, no, no. I, I, no, I think no. let all of that stuff be memes of the past. Yeah, like, that's yeah, what yeah. makes it special. Okay. Yeah, like, uh, that's the thing. Like, I think it'd be cool, because, like, I just, I, I really want the idea. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of being able to, that could be me, that I could have, like, 24... Uh, fire and nature resistance necklace because like the necklace is like isn't that good it's like 8 strength 13 stamina 24 fire 24 nature resist but that's like one damage uh, yeah and then, then I have the damage shield so that's like best in slot like late game pvp neck <laughs> so like that's, that's the only reason I'm like I could get that but but in, in reality like so just let it go another thing this is very controversial battleground wall jumps and things like that oh Before yeah some goals, you could get out of the Arathi Basin gate ahead of time there's the one to get into the the alliance base in Ultrak Valley. I think you got to get rid of that stuff. Obviously, yeah. it, it was well, obviously people would get reported for it. People would get reported for yeah. it, and you get you get suspended for it. it reported. Was, That's a big one. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, should, we, we need to talk about that in yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, people would get reported for doing the the jumps, and the, I I I totally remember this because people would do the jumps, and then they would go and they would they would watch the people do them, and then all of a sudden this guy DCs or like the guy sitting on top of the roof. Like, he, he goes and he sits on top of, the, not the roof of the base, but, like, he'll do some kind of memory to get someplace that's, that's you can't get there. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden he disconnects, and the flag's just sitting there, and then, I, and then resets. Like, I, I remember that's what happened all the time. I feel I mean, like that's a mouse trap. Like, why put a mouse trap in the game? Uh, I think that... Well, they didn't intentionally do it. It, it wasn't, right. on, yeah, it wasn't on purpose. It wasn't on purpose. It was just part of the wall jumps. Like, I mean, I used to do them all, and I think the only people, I've done them all, and I've won Battlegrounds because of them back in the day. I feel like the only people defending these things are people that use them on, currently on private servers to their advantage. Well, here's an example, and this is a current <laughs> example. Uh, there's a point where you can hurl up leap in Twin Peaks in the current game, and you can leap up there to where you can get past the invisible wall, wall, and you can just run away with the flag, and nobody can ever hit you because there's a giant open field. So all you need to do is get your flag car carrier up there, and then you've basically won the game, because there's no way that anybody can get to your flag yeah. carrier, he can't take any damage, and so you win one cap, and then that's it. Yeah. Uh, it's ridiculous, and so obviously these things should not be in the game, right? I agree. Bugs that allow you, they give you a competitive advantage, I, I don't think should be in the game, especially if Blizzard is going to punish players for them. Now, if this is something that everybody is allowed to exploit, I think probably the biggest gray area there yeah, that's a different is, discussion. Uh, I, I think it was the mobs in uh, Blackrock Depths that you were able to mind control to give yourself the fire resistance buff. Fire resistance. Uh, yeah. And, and, and yeah, yeah. Upper upper shield spell. Spell. Well, it was just it was just the entrance at the RS. Uh, the the point here is that there is a very very fine line between clever use of game mechanics and exploiting. I feel like jumping on top of a map and making yourself unhittable whenever yeah. you're mm -hmm. getting the flag in a competitive match is an exploit and mind controlling a mob to give yourself a fire resistance buff is clever use of game mechanics. I agree. And I think that Blizzard probably is going to do a very good job in terms of navigating what's fair and what's not. Because yeah. nobody has fun whenever a game's not fair. Yeah. I think specifically with, with the wall jumping in BGs, um, I am I never ranked super high or anything like that. I totally defer to the rankers. But it seems like people that I've talked to that are super high, you know, going hardcore, they seem to be very open. Like, they like it. They well, think they, it just they, they raises well, they the like skill cap. Well, they say, yeah, it, no. it raises the skill cap. because they want to steamroll people. Like, I, yeah. I've won six-minute ABs. I've won, like, mm -hmm. seven-minute, five-minute, whatever, war songs. Like, yeah. I, like I, I, I've done that, right? The reason why they want it is because they just want to steamroll, and, and, and they just want to grind honor to rank up. Like, that, that's that's why it's there, right? But well, that, that's, why, not, that's not why it's there. It that's why very, they want it there. It creates a very contrived gameplay. Right? Yeah. Where, like, now... Like, they're not, they're not beating you because they're better than you. They're beating you because well, they're out memeing you. Well, here's what happens, them. right? Is, like, let's say in, in current RPGs, you've yeah. got two clown teams that both have a demon hunter 
that's uh, using the fell strike or the fell jump over and over to try to get the right pixel that he needs to jump onto so he can run away from everybody forever. Mm -hmm. Like you have just have 20 people clowning around next to a rock. Instead like of trying to play the game. It, it's a stupid way to play the game. Yeah. And to a certain extent, like Blizzard obviously should try to make sure that the game doesn't go some kind of contrived route mm -hmm. of using some sort of an exploit. And if you want to use that as some sort of an argument for a skill cap, you can have that conversation, but I don't necessarily think that it's good gameplay. Mm -hmm. And I think that Nintendo. I, I do think point, it's a real argument, but, yeah. it's, but I don't think it's well, a, it, I don't think it, it's it is an gameplay. argument, right? But yeah. I think that the argument that uh, supersedes that is uh, intended gameplay, right? right? Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't think this is an example of boys. Like, if you cannot attack the flag carrier, that is a problem. That is yeah. a problem. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, like, there's there's ways in Warsong in vanilla that you could, like, wall jump on the corner. Like, so so you grave, mm -hmm. graveyard here, you go in here, there's the corner in here that goes into the building. You, you've seen this, where you can wall jump, and people mm -hmm. wall jump, mm -hmm. and they go, like, halfway up. Yep. Right? And then you can't touch them. That's, yep. That guy's not better than you. That guy's cheating. <laughs> like, yeah. like, and, and sometimes these rankers, like, not, I, I, I'm, I'm not generalizing all rankers here, right? What I'm saying is, like, there are times where it's, like, as a ranker, people are like, oh, like, that's good, you know, increase the skill cap, like, one faster or whatever, but you're not winning because you're better than them. You're well, it makes everybody have to do it, and that's yeah. another issue, is that, like, Because you're not you, playing the game at that Well, point. once you have, like, this certain thing to where, like, everybody needs to be this class, or everybody needs to be, you know, use this method or whatever, like, again, I can go back to RPGs, again, uh, Demon Hunter tanks, especially in Legion, were by far and away the best tanks. Yeah. I do not think that is good game design, and obviously we don't want to change the game design of vanilla, but the still the same philosophy should be there that Demon Hunter tanks being infinitely better than every single other tank does not necessarily make the game better because it forces everyone to play in a certain way. And this is what I'm saying with the, uh, the wall jumping and everything. Right, right. Is that it forces you, if you want to be competitive, Whenever you're playing these battlegrounds, you need to perform these actions yeah. because these are game-breaking actions yeah. that both teams need to take advantage of. Yeah. And that's why I don't think they should be in the game. Well, here's another thing. You could get reported for it, and you get suspended for it in vanilla while, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know what? Like, if you want to leave it in the game, and you want to risk doing that to win some games, and you get yourself a 24-hour, and you just kill your rank for the week, like, let's say you, let's say you lose it on Saturday. You got double... Double Warsong weekend, double honor weekend on Warsong, and then you, you just lost 24 hours. You lost 24 hours where you could have been ranking in Warsong and getting double honor. I mean, okay, just F yourself. Like, it, it doesn't make sense. Like, what are you thinking, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I think that could yeah, happen, but right. also, as I said, it's like a mouse trap. Like, why put a mouse trap in the game? Mm -hmm. Why have something that's like, let's say if you loot this mob, you get banned. Like, why would you even have the mob in the game? That's mm -hmm. true. Uh, I, I just, I don't know. I don't really see the purpose in it. I think that you should, at certain points, like kind of expect players to be stupid and plan around it. <laughs> I agree. What about going back to the TCG thing? I've actually been thinking about it since you brought yeah. it up. But what do you think? TCG rules. Well, I mean, <sighs> they were in vanilla, right? Mm -hmm. So the first the the first one came out in October of two thousand and six, and the second one came out in April two thousand and seven. So that means there was only one that was out during Vanilla WoW. Mm -hmm. So I think that. Well, I mean, they're not going to reintroduce the cards. Yeah, so, the costs are really high. Yeah, I mean, yeah. in my mind, and this this is maybe a bit, I don't know if you guys will agree with this, the old TCG game where you could get the, the items in game and get mouse, whatever whatever the, the items were, um, that was essentially the precursor to an in-game cap shop. I think also... Well, uh, I, 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 I think loot boxes. Every, every, yeah, everyone, I loot boxes. Everyone can agree on this. Is it, who gives a fuck? Yeah. Like that's a, yeah. it's a, it's a small, I, the most I, that, yeah, I'm not even concerned about minute, it, yeah. meaningless detail that nobody cares about. They're yeah. not going to reprint the cards. They're not mm -hmm. going to allow you to redeem the codes on classic. Okay, it's not going to have. There's no. So, so what if they have an in-game classic web cash shop where they sell these original items? What do you think about that? No, thank you. I just, I just, we're good. I think we're good. I think we're good on that one. I just. I don't even I, like that. That's something that's I, I don't know. I just I don't even want to. I don't even want to mention that. Do you guys want to take a question from? Yeah, let's take a yeah, question. Let's let's do it. Let's so do it. we are we are running a little bit short on time. So uh, guys, we're gonna go ahead and move over to, to doing some questions. I asked Andy to come help us out because we don't have the normal PC setup. There's 
there's so much more that goes on behind the scenes with Classic Cast than, than just turning on the camera and going. Um, and, and that's kind of what we're doing here. So, so Andy came to kind of help us out. Uh, if you guys want to tweet at her or tweet at us, make sure you put hashtag Classic Cast. That's what she's going to be searching, and she's going to be asking some questions on Twitter. Uh, we'll probably be taking more questions from Twitter, Twitter from Twitter. than than, uh, than chat. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, definitely more. <laughs> 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 right, right, we've okay. got one question here. Okay. Do you believe that after the success of Classic, that they'll implement BC or even Wrath as progressive from the vanilla servers? That presupposes the success of Classic. Yeah. If the Classic is very successful. I Classic in the well, well, here's what I think they should do, right? And this is like this conversation comes up a lot. Mm -hmm. um, what I think they should do, this seems to be the best solution, is they will allow players to transfer their characters over. Now, in transferring, does that character get deleted? That's a big conversation to have, and I think we could go back and forth about that for hours. Mm -hmm. But uh, your character is moved one way or another from the vanilla server to a 2.0 server that does not have Burning Crusade out yet, and then you know you have like the pre-expansion hype, the uh, expansion goes live at a certain point in time, and maybe a month or so after the expansion goes live, they introduce a new fresh vanilla server. I feel like that would be perfect. I agree. Yeah. No, I mm -hmm. think it's a perfect solution. Um, okay. It similar, is, yeah. sorry, go on. Go no, 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 please, please. I was gonna say, my, my ideal scenario is actually how it happened back in the day, but when vanilla, I, I think it's a little bit different from what you said, the original classic servers should become should become a TBC server, and then at the same time they offer a fresh vanilla server. I, yeah. from my perspective, I feel like the people who want to stay in vanilla WoW should have the privilege to be able to stay in vanilla WoW. Just keep running so, around in yeah. full T3. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. if that's what they want to do, I, I think that's what they should be able to do. I, I feel like it could be very uh, upsetting or frustrating, or it could also give people a sense of futility, right? to spend a year developing a character, right? Getting your Winter Spring Frost Saber's reputations and everything like that built up to have it forced into a, uh, a level 60 or a level 70 area. And I think some people do get something really good about like the completionist element of the game. Getting the full tier three, getting your mm -hmm. Winter Spring Frost Saber, exactly. getting your High boys. War Order or uh, Grand Marshal. Uh, I, I don't think players should be forced into it, right. but one, uh, I guess, middle ground that maybe we could come to is that I think that maybe if you do move your character over from the Burning Crusade server, it deletes it on Classic. Okay. See, uh, uh, and that, that's the hour-long conversation. Yeah. Right? This is, this is, oh, yeah. Man. So, you have to hard commit into TBC. Like it's I, it's yeah, yeah I don't yeah it's a tough it's a four it's a four year down the line yeah this, there, this is the conversation yeah. that we're, we're yeah. gonna literally yeah. talk about this for the entirety of last yeah year. Like, this yeah. Is yeah. Come up in nonstop. two years we're gonna talk about this all the time yeah, yeah. yeah. day two of classic launch dude <laughs> yeah. yeah well <laughs> once classic PC yeah like, exactly yeah. one concern that with populating a TBC server with full T three or you know late game vanilla characters is your one to fifty eight experience there's no one there there's no there's no linen cloth in the auction house. There's right. no silk cloth in the auction house, you know? So that, that early game economy and those items, they're non-existent unless people are just going out and farming them at max level. It's not its not a natural 1 to 70 fully healthy server. Um, it, that problem is you're, very you're, hard you're to talking about not having You're talking about not having transfers into a Burning Crusade server, is what you're talking about. I, I think wherever you are, when at, at the two-year finale of mm -hmm. the first class of server, you should just move on to TPC. Just, just as it was back in the day. The so way, you will have low levels as well. I think that you're right about that, but I also think that one thing that could counter that is some of the added elements of recovery and classes generally playing better and being more effective. People just make whenever, characters. Well, whenever 2.0 is out. I, I feel like many classes got better whenever 2.0 came out. True. At, at leveling, at recovery, uh, Warlocks, for example. Uh, many classes, I feel, were Everyone that. Everyone would go so, well, well, yeah, or, or whatever, right? And it gives people a reason. Now, are you right to an extent? Yeah, I think so. But I think people who are leveling up and want to do Burning Crusade content will be uh, incentivized to move over to Burning Crusade servers, even if, let's say, they're only level 37, because their character generally is going to play better on the 2.0 client than the 1.12 client. Right, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I see your point there with all those old maps basically be non-existent, but at the same time, not everyone would necessarily move their character. Maybe they would want to start fresh as well. Maybe some people want to keep the yeah. level 60, yeah. so it, it yeah. does give that option as well. well they keep that just, level 60 They could make it a window, right? And so, like, the window would be for, uh, you know, the one month or whatever between 
you know, the pre-expansion Burning Crusade events, then the Burning Crusade would come out and server transfers would be closed. And then people who wanted to come on Burning Crusade would have to level, have to level naturally. Yeah. Right. And I think yeah, that, that would be a good, a, good uh, yeah. a good middle ground to reach. Uh, I, I feel like there's a lot of ways for Blizzard to deal with it, but I think the first thing that they should do is deal with Classic, make that successful, or do their best to make it successful, and then if it's successful, look into the viability of a Burning Crusade server. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, one step at a time. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a way down the road. What do you got next, Annie? Next question, uh, should Blizzard help guide players to what specs are viable? For example, red pallets <laughs> didn't exist due to lack of taunt or crusader strike. Sounds like communism to me. No, no, uh, <laughs> no. Just, I, think, like I think I think they, yeah. they, they should have to look up classic web videos and streams to find out if they want to know. That's what they should do. Yeah, yeah. no show. I mean, just, mm -hmm. just play the game. Right. I just play the game. Just, yeah. just play the game, dude. There should be like watch my videos. Could bro. they <laughs> could they give video. you extra information on the website? Like I don't know that that could be a conversation. Yeah, I mean, but uh, should there be anything in game that tells you don't play a prop paladin? No. Well, there's an episode of Futurama where like they're they're sitting there watching like a, a Goosebumps style of book as a movie, right? And it's like okay, audience, like what do you want to happen? And it's like the clip was like yes or no. And it's like they hit yes, and then it's just like, okay, it's no. It just automatically chooses the no. Like, it's just whatever you want. It's like, no, 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 you don't want that in here. You think you do, but. I, no, 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 I mean, it's just like a whole thing. Like, I don't know, just, just play the game. There's just something to be said for that innocence of not knowing what's good and just ha genuinely having fun. Let me ask you guys this. If you could just wipe your memory of vanilla and play classic I'd for the first time, heartbeat. would you do it? In a heartbeat, I would do it. Should you play it heartbeat. for the first time? Absolutely. Mm, first time. No. No, you wouldn't? No. Do it in a heartbeat. You want to dumpster people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's not. The experience is not the same. Like, it, it won't be like now because things are so interconnected, you're not going to have the mystique of, uh, you know, can I actually fish Ashbringer out of, uh, you know, the water underneath a bridge yeah. in between the eastern and western plaguelands? Oh, you're not, it, it, that's not going to happen. If the button could um, take you back, I guess it would be yeah, yeah, if I could go back in time and re-experience it in all the different ways, yes, of course, absolutely. Um, but it's obviously not really possible to do that, so the next best thing, in my opinion, would just be to Dominate, you know, like, dude. Yeah, dude. I mean, like, yeah, you, yeah. like <laughs> classic WoW is going to be much different than vanilla WoW, yeah. uh, just by the nature of how technology and uh, interconnectedness has evolved, and that's something that we can't really do anything about. Yeah, absolutely. There's actually a really good question here. Uh, how do you guys feel about the debuff limit that's on the demo right now? Well, we, we don't know what the true de uh, limit is, right? Well, didn't I, I? I thought I read a post today on the classic subreddit. I, don't, I didn't read like how deep they got into it, but it seemed like sixteen debuff slots confirmed based on the map done. So I, I played the demo for like fifteen or twenty minutes this morning, and I was in a dead mines group, like an outer dead mines group. Where I had ten people, mm -hmm. and first thing I noticed, okay, debuffs are private, so you can only see your debuffs. You can't see any, any, anyone else's debuffs. Mm -hmm. That's weird. Um, I also, and I, this is not a confirmation, I don't know, uh, it sounds like it's been confirmed to be 16. That is a holdover again from 7.3. I agree. I agree. Because you are not able to see other people's debuffs unless you have something enabled that's not possible to enable unless you have an additional like amount of filters and it's like a, an add-on to like yeah. the other debuffs. It's like really stupid, but there it is. That was removed in Legion. Oh, look, let me tell you, Blizzard should have known damn well that we were gonna vanilla brain enough to look into something like that. That's like something so yeah, that's, that's the most discussed, yeah. you know, <laughs> like, first thing we're checking. They should have known, like, we're gonna yeah. look at that. Well, <laughs> it, well, it's something that's iconic, and the reason why it's so important, and same with eight debuff slots, is if you have eight debuff slots, you have to decide who gets to put buffs on the bones, right? right? So you've got yeah. Sunder Armor, Curse of Elements, I forgot what the other ones were. Yeah. But it allows <coughs> you to make a certain choice. If you have 16 debuff slots, then that makes certain specs like Shadow Priest, like Warlocks, more viable. Yeah. And those things do change the way the game gets played. Mm -hmm. And it's not like this is a completely irrelevant thing. Now, my understanding was that the debuff slot limit was more of a technical limitation you were right. than okay, yes. more of yeah. a technical limitation than yeah. intended gameplay. My yes. perspective on this is that I think that they will probably just release with 16 debuff slots, but if they only had it with 8, and then whenever the patch that I think it was for um, BWL, maybe it was BWL or... ZG. Yeah. It was, I know it was ZG. 
for some reason I thought it was BWO. The, well, the last patch that you had it was BWO. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, th I think the reason you're actually right. Uh, we we talked to John Stats and Mark Kern and everyone uh, and uh, Kevin Jordan on Classic Guys, and yeah. they they confirmed it was not intentional. It was a hardware or, or just a design limitation, right? That's what it was yeah. from eight to sixteen. But we also it. we also talked to them and said we balanced the raids around the debug slots. Yeah. Exactly. So it is so it's the, the reason why it's debug less slots, they're going to have to. I sorry, I'm cutting you off. Yes. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, they they had to balance around them. Regar the reason why they were there is much less important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, and to add to that, uh, I was gonna say it's like they, given that there's 16 UF slots, we're gonna have this guy have this much health. So if they were right. to have, or given that there's eight, given that there's 16, whatever. So if they want to, uh, if they want to do anything like that, are they gonna go back and, in order to give us the most authentic class experience that they claim that they want to give us? Are they going to like increase some values and tune some numbers in order to have like okay, this was eight UF slots at this point. But now that it's 16 debuff slots, debuff slots, excuse me, is he going to have a little bit more health? Is he going to have a little bit of this, a little bit of that? My perfect world is that whenever ZG comes out, they make it 16. And it's starts at 8. Yeah. I, I think that's yeah. probably what that's yeah, that's now, what now, perfect world does not necessarily mean what, 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 do, I, what do I think they're going to do. <laughs> yeah, I think that they're going to start off with 16. Right? That's yeah. what I'm pretty much assuming. Yeah. But in a perfect world, I would love to see it start with 8 and then go to 16 because I feel like that's the traditional experience. And also, uh, you know, like Molten Core is already very easy. And especially with the 1.12 talents and everything, and especially if these gear pieces, like uh, Tips was talking about earlier, come out on release, it, it's going to fall over even if you're not even trying. Dude, I, I, I think for, for very good guilds, yes, and even medium guilds, but you will have guilds. You have that, guilds, you'll have guilds that are hard stuck on GAR for weeks. They, they won't kill the lobby ones. Oh, you'll have, you will have majority done, of guilds. Yeah. I don't know. Look, there's normal mode guilds in WoW now. I, I, I don't know how they do it, but they do it every single week, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and uh, I don't understand it at all. But there it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like that's just that's just the nature of it. Like, I mean, you're going to have these top tier guilds that are just going to smoke it in one night, but um, there's going to be plenty of guilds that are spending two, three months in molten core, maybe more. I think making an authentic experience is important, and I think that's the main thing they should focus on. <coughs> and uh, the difficulty that's derived from debuff slots is part of that authentic experience. I agree, yeah, hundred percent. So, um, oh, something I, I, I want to touch on this. We should have touched on this earlier. I, I saw the question in chat, and I just I, I, I vaulted it. But um, a couple of people were asking about the health regen rates on the demo. I think it's a bug. That's that's what like kind of what we were talking about earlier. So that's again, it was way high. It had to be high. So yeah. so that that also uh, in Cataclysm, I believe this is whenever it happened. Is player movement speed was increased, mm -hmm. hundred percent, like the previous you know hundred and twenty percent became 100%, or, you know, maybe yeah, 100%, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, and it was moved up, and your character simply moved faster. That and the health regen are probably, again, holdovers from the Legion system that Blizzard is working backwards from. Right. The calendar. So it's, it's, and it's, it, yeah, it's not a design decision. It's not a design decision. It's it's just holdover Legion clutter, right? Uh, but again, like I was saying, this is something that like, you report this. Hey, I think the health regen rates are too high, mm -hmm. right? I think this, would you guys please look into this? Um, this is an interesting question. Uh, will there be Armory and Classic? Now, obviously, nobody knows that answer. What do you guys think about Armory and Classic? I think they should have an Armory, and I think that they should have daily player-submitted screenshots like they used to have back in the day. I love so Armory. Community, so that's just fun. Yeah. Armory was in Burning Crusade whenever it came out, right? Yeah. But here's the thing. There's, there's, somebody's going to make a third-party website anyway to do it, yep. so you might as well yeah. just Blizzard. Just, you already have it in there. Just do it. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Uh, I don't know. I... The thing with Armory is it's interesting because it's actually not really, it's a change without it being a game change because it's completely third party. Or yeah, not third party, but it's, it's outside. It's, it's outside, it's, outside the game. Yeah, yeah, it's outside the game. So I'm trying to think, how does this affect, how does this affect the game? Uh, how does this affect in-game? I am, uh, no so on private is, service, yeah. right? So on private service, you have realm players or legacy players or whatever. And on private service, what they do is you can go in, you just type in your character info, whatever, and then... Uh, you put server, you do this, you do that, and then you can look up your character, you can have all this gear, all this whatever. Now, it's, I mean, it's it's a third-party website. Some some people are just, like, throwing it together. Maybe some random guys throwing it together. But, um, I don't know. I, I, I would, I, I don't mind. I would love to see a classic, like, classic.worldofwarcraft.com. I would love to see that, where it was, it's it's the old website, 
with the with the drop down yeah, menus that yeah, yeah. break down and, and you, you can have your armory embedded in. I would love to see that. You got the community section. Yeah. I think that'd just be cool. Like that, uh, I, I don't know. I, I love the old website. I, I think that's I thought that was the best website. I'm, I'm dead serious when I say this. To date, I think that is my favorite design website ever. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. I think it's fan service that they can do for the player base. It right. means it's a lot to them, thing. and also it doesn't necessarily hurt anything. And I think that if you ever have a situation where you can do something that makes people happy, that really care about your product, whenever it doesn't hurt anyone else, you should probably take advantage of it unless it's just going to be ridiculously expensive. One thing we didn't talk about, and I've seen brought up a couple of times, is the issue of add-ons. And add-ons that become so powerful that they subvert the philosophy of Classic WoW. So an example of this obviously would be a Group Finder add-on. Now, obviously Group Finder is completely uh, you know, against the philosophy of Classic WoW in every single way. And so what if somebody makes a Group Finder add-on that allows you to uh, automatically queue up for groups for, let's say, dead minds? Yeah, so... So, 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 do, you, so do you think Blizzard should stop that? I do think there should be, you know, Mark Kern said there should be a constitution of, uh, you know, in regards to like the philosophies that guide vanilla. Mm -hmm. I, I don't necessarily agree with that, but to apply that to add-ons specifically, there are a lot of add-ons, especially if, you know, it sounds like there's some kind of uh, hybrid, you know, I don't know how the technical side works, but basically the add-ons that work on 735 don't work in classic as of now. Well, and the add-ons on 112 don't work in classic as of now, according to the DBM guy, but I do think there should be some kind of line. There is precedent for it in vanilla. They did stop the curse of in vanilla, so there is a precedent for them to intervene. Happened in Wrath. Happened in Wrath. Happened in Wrath too. Too. Yeah. Yeah. So they they, sh they should be very aware. I hope. At, yeah, you're right. There's precedent. Yeah. Add-ons just really fundamentally undermine the gameplay experience. I do think yes. that they should be shut down. And I think you're, you're not necessarily constitution, but just this is not this is not in line. Group Finder, for example, is not in line with the exactly. philosophy of vanilla. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So. This is something, uh, now I, I wasn't told this specifically, right, but getting a chance to kind of talk with some Blizzard people, uh, I actually brought this up, right, and I was like, well, what about certain add-ons that kind of like, they're, they're not vanilla, like group finders and that, it's like, I got the vibe that they were not about it. Like, they, they I got the vibe that they did not like the idea of people doing add-ons like that. Now, I don't, I don't know. Right, I was just talking to like some random people. I wasn't talking to devs. I was talking to some random Blizzard employees. But I got, I, I got the vibe that they didn't seem to like that idea that that people could do that. So I don't know. Yeah. That that could be something. That hopefully they step I, in. I, and I think they're going to break the add-ons. I think that yeah. they, I think they should break if it. If I had to bet, that. I think that they will. Yeah. Will, will it even be possible to make an add-on like that if the tool itself is not inbuilt in the game? Uh, like well, OQ and Miss. I, I think well, it's like more of a hypothetical, right? Yeah, yeah, because like yeah. Yeah. AVR, for example, was the add-on that Blizzard had to break in ICC as patch 3.35, I believe, and um, they, I think, removed some of the functionality from that. And then again, this happened with them reducing the functionality of, I think it was friendly nameplates in uh, Nighthold because of the way that it was able to trivialize the Grand Trine mechanic and the uh, Grand or whatever conjunction or constellation mechanic that happened on Mythic Star Augur. And um, that was done as a response to people seeing a lot of these guilds use these weak auras that were able to just completely trivialize the Mythic mechanics. And I think one of the issues with that, and, and this is more of a, uh, a current WoW thing, but something that could happen in Classic WoW too, depending on how serious it gets, is people using add-ons that are able to basically allow them to perform at a level that's so much higher than other people, right? So like you can think of something like Be Cursive or um, you know, things that are able to do different rotations for you that mm -hmm. usually you might not be able to math out correctly. And, and I think that whenever that happens, it does artificially increase the gap between players that do have these add-ons. And of course, players that have add-ons are by the nature more skilled and more understanding of the game because they're able to download add-ons and players that are newer and don't understand the game. And it creates this artificial gap of skill. And so this is an issue with current WoW too. And I do think that, that those problems should be brought further in line and you should try to make sure that everybody's playing on an even playing field as much as possible. But I also think that they should not get rid of add-ons unless they are like really bad, like AVR, Group Finder, right. um, Decursive maybe, right? Things like that. Was it uh, during Legion where there was an add-on where people had voiceovers for quest text? Um, oh, so, really? so, so that was Belior, right? so that, okay, uh, that was Belior. He made a, uh, an add-on, and the reason that he had to stop doing that is because Blizzard had to ask him to stop 
because his add-on was so comprehensive, it was being considered an entire expansion that they're making for the game. So, uh, unfortunately, Bellier had to stop making the content. I think it was unfortunate for Blizzard, too. It's not something that they wanted to do. It's just because their legal department determined that because of the, uh, the comprehensive nature of the add-on, they had to get rid of it. I, I, that's what I think happened. I, I don't remember exactly, but that's what I think. Okay. Well, what about add-ons that help a lot, but isn't really doing anything in the competitive scene? So how about like, like, like a quest, quest helper? helper. Okay, yeah. yeah, that's a good example. Um, quest helper, the first quest helper that came out that I used was Carbonite Quest mm -hmm. and Wrath of the Lich King. And I didn't, I, think, use anything till, I didn't use anything till that either. Yeah, actually. I think that, so... You didn't use one in TBC, really? No. Yeah, I didn't use one. I, I didn't even know they existed until Carbonite. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. so weird that you mentioned that. I, like, I just had yeah, a weird flashback, yeah. yeah. It was whenever I quit, and then ca I didn't even use it in my first run through Wrath. It was, I got a couple levels, quit the game, and then I came back later on, and then I used it. I, uh, never, I never used one in vanilla, but I'm pretty sure there was an option. It was very rudimentary, but I think there was one. I don't, I don't remember the name. There was definitely one in TBC. Not sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, Carbonite had to have come out in TBC for it to be ready for the. I think it was just called Quest Helper in TBC. Probably I think that's what yeah. it's called. So, um, very interesting thing about uh, uh, questing and leveling times. So, uh, a recent legal, you know, server uh, recently uh, released some statistics on leveling, and we're talking about a pretty, you know, if you're playing on legal servers, which you know technically you shouldn't be, um, that that's a very small, condensed, you know, higher skill player base on average. They still the took, deep they, cut, yeah. Yeah, they still took eleven days played on average to get to level sixty. Back in vanilla, it was fifteen days played, I think, for the average player. But mm -hmm. uh, even with quest, I mean, people use quest helpers on these servers, so it's like maybe it's not that big of a deal. I mean, if anything, I found like my best success, my best leveling times have come from primarily grinding and stuff. But obviously, different classes have different strengths and weaknesses. But I, I, I don't think quest helpers are that. Like huge in vanilla, they they would you would think they would be, but but eleven days I, play. That's... I don't think it undermines vanilla. Wow, yeah. I mean, people were going to thought literally back to what I was yeah. was was doing when I was a kid. I would go to a website, thought butter alakazam, literally every quest, yeah, and just have it tell me exactly where to go. I I just didn't read quest text ever. <laughs> I, I would do I that. I still don't know how to read. Yeah, so can't read. <laughs> I, later. I would run around like an idiot for about twenty minutes, and I'd get really mad, and I'd look it up. So yeah. it's a little bit different, <laughs> but yeah. same result. Yeah. 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 I mean, if I could go back in time and and never allow quest helpers, now we're talking about a different story. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just think the idea of kind of you know maybe we'll see this again someday of, of being able to include some kind of like RNG mechanic to allow quests to kind of have some kind of randomness where you can't always pre-map out your quest. I think that'd be interesting in like an exploration-based MMO, but uh, but in WoW specifically, like now that's already happened. I, You're I not talking think, classic. We're not talking classic. Okay. It's theoretical. It's just like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I was, I was getting the like I remember like specifically the the quest known forest. There's the Fargo Deep Mine. I think is it what is it the Jasper Wood Mine. The Jasper Wood Mine. So I remember like the quest text was like it's you know northeast of, of some place. And because my computer sucked back in the day, my view distance sucked, and the fog of war was like super close. So I just remember searching all over for this goddamn mine, and then you finally find it, and it was like this big achievement in and of itself, kind of yeah. restoring that feeling of exploration and finding quest objectives. That'd be cool, but this day and age, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it kind of, it kind of is what it is. I think, I think all that stuff's cool too. Yeah. Um, uh yeah. Well, I was do you just going to say. Do another question? Yeah, let's do maybe maybe yeah, we'll we have a couple one more or two questions. Yeah, sure. one, or, one or two more questions that, that Andy's going to look through and pick out for us, guys. If you haven't already, uh, I, I'm going to I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it put it on YouTube. Um, but if you haven't already, feel free to follow Tips Out Baby, Stay Safe TV. They're you know regularly us three do classic cast together. Asma Gold, of course, uh, Andy Fuchsia. Their names are in the title. If you guys want to follow them on Twitch. Uh, YouTube as well, uh, Stay Safe TV, Tips Out Baby, S Fan TV. Uh, you have a weird one. What's your YouTube? Just Asmongold. Yeah, YouTube.com slash Asmongold. I'll come up, don't worry about it. Yeah, it'll be figured out. And, uh, Second page, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah I mean, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be a whole bunch of like <laughs> highlight channels, and then it'll be Asmongold at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so, and then Annie as well. Annie's on YouTube as well. Um, so yeah, let's, let's go ahead and take a couple more questions. We're going to do this again. Tomorrow night as well. We'll just kind of do a short session, hour, hour and a half session uh, for a day two recap oh, tomorrow night. People, uh, people are talking about guild calendar and guild banks. Uh, they were not in nope. vanilla nope. WoW, and so they shouldn't be in the game. Now, it might seem so. Guild banks. I'll use this as an example of what guild banks do versus what do they not do. 
guild banks remove a certain amount of trust that you have to have in your guild master. Because the guild master, whenever you give them all the items in Vanilla WoW, they usually hold it on a bank character. Now, nobody has access, visual access, at all to that character. So there's an extra level of trust that players have to have in their guild master to be able to adequately loot and distribute things in a way that's ethical and fair that the guild bank makes more transparent. So these little, very, very minor social changes, I think the reason why we're in the situation that we're in with current WoW is the death of a thousand cuts, right? All of these little tiny social changes Suddenly, you've That's got right. forced personal loot, right? Over bleeding years. out, yeah, over dying. ten years, yeah, yeah. you, you got forced personal loot. Uh, I don't think that they should be in uh, vanilla classic WoW at all, and uh, it's a terrible decision. Yeah, personally, would be great in classic. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, let's do uh, let's a do question more. here. Yeah, there's a question here regarding uh, dungeon and raid sizes. If they should all be as they were before, I, I can read the whole question. It's uh, yeah, written quite long. Uh, what dungeon sizes are you hoping to see in Classic WoW? For example, Strap, Scala, LBRS, mm. and BRD were 10 man dungeons, UBRS was 15 man. Do you prefer those sizes or the 5 man groups everyone knows today? So, check this out. When Vanilla first came out, every instance was up to 40 man. Yeah. You could take 40 people into deadlines. Um, I, think, I think the sizes should be where they ended at rather than where they started. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think so too. I mean, like the. the uh, so, Blizzard came out and said this uh, in the first Water Cooler update. They felt like 1.12 was the most complete version of vanilla. And, uh, you know, there were some things along the way that we would like to see, some progressive things that we would like to see, uh, and that we have seen work out very well on, you know, private servers like Mystalrius. Um, however, one of those things <coughs> that I think, and I think a lot of people think this, they should just have it be five man. They should have the dungeons kind of I agree. As, as they ended off. Besides UBRS, yeah. Yeah. Well, you think UBRS should start 15 and change to 10? I think it should just be 10. Well, LBRS is, it would be 10 man as well. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. that's what we're talking about. Yeah. yeah cause so, so UBRS, what was it? It was, there. first off, you could do whatever you wanted, and it was 40 man everything. And then after a little while, they changed it to like, okay, uh, Strath was 10 man, or Skull was 10, uh, Strath was 10 man too, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Strath and Skull were 10 man. Uh, UBRS was 15 man. And then later on, they changed it to, you know what, let's, Tighten it down a little bit more, and we'll go five mans on everything except for UBRS was ten man. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I think they should just go with how they ended up. Well, yeah. and, and I also do want to make like one clarification. There's a couple of people in chat that kind of might be misunderstanding like a little bit more of the nuance and no changes. I think the idea of no changes is that they people don't want anything that was not existing within vanilla to be added into the game, right? right? So you look at the time period of November, whatever the hell, 2005, or four, excuse me, four. and uh, January, I think, 7th, 2007. And anything that comes inside this window of time is completely debatable, negotiable, yeah. changing exactly. is completely yeah. fine. Exactly. Those are not changes because that was in vanilla WoW. Right. And, and so just, just to clarify, works. just to clarify to that point, uh, you said January. That was the Burning Crusade release, but yes. technically the Burning Crusade patch was in the beginning. Oh, of you're December. right. You're I think right. it was like December twentieth or twelfth. Or, uh, oh, okay, yeah. So basically, so anything, December, yeah, anything yeah. before two point oh basically yeah. is uh, is okay to talk just to about. Clarify. Yeah. And little known fact, patch one twelve was like what nine months long or something. No, no. no. So one point eleven came out in I think June, which was the next patch. And then 12, I think, came out in October. It was very short. October, okay, it was too short. Yeah, I think, I think 12 was very short. Uh, it was like October or September or something. Cause I, I think it was like from 110 to 112 was like really, really long or something. Like that duration. It was like half It was like half of vanilla or something. I remember reading something uh, like that. I don't know if it was quite that long. Well, I, I think it's just the idea, yeah, right? Yeah, of course. It's, I agree. The philosophy, if you don't want to yeah. add... You, you don't want to add extra features, mechanics, content, or anything like that into the game that wasn't existing whenever vanilla was current content. Yeah, absolutely. And if it was happening whenever vanilla was, like progressive itemization, and I think that's basically, that, that's the paradox, right? Is that making no changes to items is a change, and changing items is no changes. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> it, it's very complex. It's much more nuanced than just saying no changes or anything like that. But uh, things that happened and changed and evolved within Vanilla are completely on the table to be discussed, debated, and, and I think that's what Blizzard would appreciate. That way the best ideas can come out of those discussions and debates and we can have the best game possible. Mm -hmm.
another question about looking back at old classes. We kind of touched the idea of uh, Blizzard guiding people to not pick something that can't tank properly or whatever. But what about the idea of uh, some classes just being really weak? Okay. Uh, or certain um, specs being really weak, so, should those be tuned? So is that is that is that in response as like kind of I a contradiction to like what I said about demon hunters? Uh, I think it's in the I, I in the topic of uh, no changes. The troll warrior. Uh, okay, the so, warrior again, dude. So yeah, I think obviously, it's in the topic of no changes. Obviously, nobody wants to have any sort of a class change, right? That's like mm -hmm. you don't have any. You, have no, you don't want Crusader Strike. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't want Victory Rush. No. Uh, stay safe. You don't want unstable affliction. No. Okay. So uh, what yeah. about not yeah. change mechanics, but simply number buffs? No. What um, is specified? Well, is that a change? Uh, what are you it talking is a change. About? Yeah. Well. You're talking about on, on like abilities and stuff? On what? On like abilities, like damage values? For example, yeah. 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 So here's uh, the thing. So if certain yeah. specs are weak, should no, they, be just, they just No, like, they just no, shouldn't mess with that because it's, no, it's no, like, yeah. yeah, like so, it, it's a whole snowball effect. Yes, yeah, like, of yeah. course. So because if you change one thing for one class, in vanilla WoW you play a class, you don't play a spec, right? Mm -hmm. So whenever you change the values of something, like let's say you change the base value of Holy Light mm -hmm. for a Paladin, right? Let's say you increase the base value of Holy Light for... Um, for Paladin, that affects Holy, right? That could, the idea behind that could be like, let's buff Holy Paladins, which they don't need it. But, okay, well, what's going to happen? Or let's, let's buff Rep Paladins. Let's, let's increase their off healing. Just increase the, but, decrease the mana cost of uh, Starfire. Right. It, it right. ends up affecting the other specs, right? So, like, mm -hmm. what happens? You end up having, okay, we want to buff this one spec, but you're buffing the whole class and it affects well, Holy. Here's, here's one right. way you can look at it, is that Let's say you have, like, everybody knows, like, scales, right? You, right. You, you put one thing on one scale, one thing on another. Imagine in the scale, there's nine different classes. And if you put a rock on or take a rock away from one, it changes the balance of all of the other scales mm -hmm. as well. Blizzard does not need to get into the endless loop, opening Pandora's box, <coughs> or changing the mechanics. Like, if you want to play a Moonkin in Nax, you're going to have a bad time. Well, you, that can, you can still that do it. That, yeah, you can still yeah, do it, and, it's just and fine, you can but... also play Resto, right? Yeah. And, and that is completely different than, uh, you know, my concern that I had with current gameplay, right? Because, again, we're talking about the difference and the distinction. Stay, 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 stay. Okay. okay, so, sorry, stay safe, go ahead and continue your voice. Yeah, I was going to say, it's easy to think, you know, adding a change or making a balance decision will, will be cool and it, it will, it'll be beneficial for the game, but it's very easy to overlook the negative ramifications and implications of of said change, and I think that flying is probably the best example, in my opinion. You, know, you can understand from player, from Blizzard's point of view um, why they thought it would be a good idea. You know, you can design terrain like floating islands or caves up at the tops of mountains, and it's a whole new mountain type they can design, and players are like, oh yeah, it sounds cool, but it'll be cool, we can we can do lots of crazy stuff. And then now, a decade later, um, we, re we realize, in hindsight, the way that that diminishes the player's interaction with other players, world PvP, the way that players engage with the terrain around them, um, it's been a very bad thing, and I think that I would bet that if Blizzard could go back in time, they would get rid of it. I think or, or I've Blizzard, never implemented it. I think they would uh, they would limit it a lot more than they did because yeah. I think that flying is a great thing for a while in a context. Mm -hmm. In the context of Storm Peaks, I think it's a great thing for a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the context of Elwyn Forest, I don't think that it's a great thing for right. a while. Mm -hmm. and, and I think Blizzard should have done a much better job yeah. in reining in flying. And, yeah. um, well, they, they've tried. They've tried the last three expansions, County yeah. BFA, where the first half you can't even use it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They tried to keep it so that the new content yeah. you can't fly in it. I feel like yeah. they've they've gotten rid of it to the best of their abilities in the new in new content. Yeah. 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 And I think the good news, and you know, I'm sorry, that's funny. I don't know if you want to wrap it up. Um, I honestly don't think they have ever even considered making any of these changes. I honestly <laughs> think from when they set out to do all of this. They never thought to themselves, hmm, we should probably balance classes. Think of all the work. Think of like all the arguments, the debates we just had. Like At the end of the day, what's the easiest thing to do? What's been proven to work is vanilla. Why would you go out of your way and open up a million problems just to maybe possibly improve on something that you already know has succeeded? Avert the risk. Do it as it was. I think that's been their plan since day one. Just give the people what they want. You know? exactly. It's actually a good point. I mean, they're starting with balancing... Yeah. Game now, so. yeah, exactly. <laughs> they would go back yeah. and try to balance that. Shadow priest, where you at, dude? Yeah. 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 So I say this all the time. Sorry, I, was, I just have yeah, to say yeah, it's, it's very weird to me that people, you know, for half a decade, people have been, you know, we want vanilla, no changes. We really want vanilla. Posting on forums, making videos, streaming private servers, playing private servers, pushing just to be able to replay this game, and then the second now it's in front of us, 
it's like, okay, now what can we change? Can we, yeah, can we have class like, rebalance? Yeah. Can we have post next content? Can we do this? Can we do that? Mm -hmm. Let's just play the game that we know and that we love and we've been we've yeah. been trying to get in front of us. Yeah, let's, let's get back to that question in two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think I think that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, guys, we are going to do this. We are going to do this again tomorrow night. Kind of do a little uh, hour, hour and a half uh, powwow, kind of like we did tonight. Uh, same sort of idea. We're, we're using the IRL backpack. It might be a little bit scuffed. It might drop in and out here and there. Uh, I will post these to YouTube. Uh, again, tips out, baby. Stay safe, TV. If you can hit them with a follow, YouTube sub, and of course, Annie and Asmin as well. Um, on uh, they're they're both on YouTube and Twitch as well. So uh, and if you like uh, me too, you know, if you guys feel like it, you know, me too. If you, if you guys want to follow me as well. <laughs> but but uh, guys, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, I think tomorrow's gonna be a pretty interesting day. Uh, we're going to have yeah. the classic panel, so we're going to have a lot to talk about. We might go a little bit over time tomorrow, but um, you have a flight tomorrow I, night, don't you? I live tomorrow night. Okay. Uh, so night. I noticed there's quite a few people talking about sharding, so they probably missed the beginning, so it's probably yeah. something to talk about tomorrow, too. Yeah, we might, we might touch on sharding a little I'm bit sure more. I'm sure they will. And we might get some panel. clarification. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think it's really worth talking about too much more until yeah. we get that clarification tomorrow. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, guys, thanks a lot for watching. I know this was kind of last minute, but I feel like, honestly, this is the first time we've ever done Classic Cast where everybody was in the same room. Yeah, it's really yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Cool that? Yeah, awesome. and, and yeah. sponsored by Cars 2 uh, yeah, in course. theaters yeah. sometime. So. A couple years ago. <laughs> a couple yeah. years ago. Yeah. It's on DVD now. <laughs> Maybe it's still at Redbox. Go yeah. check it out, guys. Yeah, or Blockbuster. Yeah. Uh, anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. IRLs, whatever, the, the whole deal. See you guys. Peace. Later.